It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, it's trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. I'm taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. <laughs> It starts with some beer, so you shouldn't have fear. Two garbage guys with facts, but they both still have tact. It's that time at last for the best damn podcast. It's Can Crusher Day! And welcome back to another Can Crusher Spotlight. Your host, Mark Martinez, bringing you all the great wrestling action here on Can Crusher Spotlight. You know this is my favorite part of the podcast where we get to sit down and talk with some wrestlers. And this weekend, December 7th, in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, IWC presents the second annual Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. And we thought there's no other way than to talk to somebody on that card. So we thought, and we thought, we didn't think that long. We knew we had to reach out to Jack Pollock, who is challenging Jackson Argos for that IWC Heavyweight Championship. Jack has returned from a devastating knee injury. Hopefully we get to talk to him about, you know, the the coming back from that and, you know, did he reach out to anybody to get some help or anything like that? What would he do? Did he play video games for a year off? What what did he do? So we reached out to Jack Pollock and after some bribery because he was already getting set to just hone his skills to kick Jackson Argos's ass, he said, okay, let me come on. I want to say my piece, but it's got to be short and sweet because I am ready to kick some ass. So I said, okay, Jack, that's fine and dandy. We'll do it. We'll get it, We'll get you going, and boom. So right after this, from Collar and Elbow, you're going to hear the interview with Jack Pollock. Guys, you hear us talking about Collar and Elbow all the time. These shirts, hats, hoodies, you know, are great. The material is so soft and so comforting. It's just great wrestling apparel from wrestlers. You know, Al Snow is behind this company as well, and he just makes sure all the designs are great. I mean, my Macho Man Al Snow head, you know, shirt is one of my favorites now just because of how it feels. Uh, when you check out, type in Can Crushers, capital C in the can, capital C in the crushers, and you'll get 10% off. Plus, you help kick back to help our podcast. So, all right, let's go to Al, and then when we return, Jack Pollock is waiting on the line. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome back to Can Crushers. I have the trending topic, and who am I going to say the next IWC heavyweight champion? Welcome to Can Crushers, Jack Pollock. How the hell are you? Uh, I'm, I'm doing great tonight. You know what? You could also add IWC's hardcore icon onto that list that you're saying now. Not, not just the next trending topic, 
not the best thing that happened to pro wrestling since pro wrestling happened, but I'm also the hardcore icon of the International Wrestling Cartel now. There you go. All right. Well, see, that's what I was. I was just wanted to make sure that you understood that you are the next heavyweight champion in IWC because you know you're bouncing back from an injury, but you got that son of a bitch Jackson Argos that has been up your ass sideways. And uh, this Saturday, you're gonna take him to the woodshed. Uh, there's nothing that I've looked more forward to. Uh, since reloaded in January, then this moment coming up on Saturday. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing means more right now to me than putting my hands on Jackson Argus finally and beating the living hell out of him. And that's since January. So you've been on the shelf for, you know, nine months more or less. Let's talk about that before we do the full rewind. Um, how was that nine months just sitting there uh, struggling? Um, you know what? It's uh, oddly, it's I had ten months to kind of prepare for the surgery and all that because I flew out my knee back in March. I actually didn't even wrestle a single match in WC last year on a healthy knee. It, once once I came back after I was fired, my knee was already gone. So it's like I, I had time to kind of think about it and prepare. And I've watched so many YouTube videos about ACL surgery and the rehab and all that. And talk to guys. I talked to Jimmy Nuts quite a bit about it uh, back before surgery, just trying to prepare myself. But I never really realized how hard it was going to be to get away from wrestling. Um, and you never realize that I've, I've, I'm always beat up, but I've never been injured. Uh, that when you can't finally go, how much you actually miss and love wrestling more than you think. Uh, so it was definitely, definitely tougher than I thought it was going to be for sure. What did you do to pass your mind? Literally, like taking taking a couple months break is probably all right, but just. You couldn't be in the ring. You couldn't go to the gym. What did you really do? Uh, video games? I mean, what what do you do? No, nah, actually, uh, I haven't. I have a TV that I haven't turned on in my apartment since 2014 when my uh, PlayStation 3 hard drive fried on it. So uh, I laid in bed for the first two months after surgery. Didn't work out once other than going to rehab. Uh, I tried keeping up with wrestling as much as I could. Um, and... Initially, it was nice just to kind of unwind and all that sort of stuff. Like You're, you're right there when you say that, like a, a few months away. But, I mean, the itch was always there um, to get back sooner than I could. Uh, so I definitely I kept up with IWC and everything that was going on and some of the other companies uh, that I worked for, Premier, Revenge, stuff like that. Whether, whether I'm at a wrestling show or not, I still try to keep up with everything, uh, even if I shouldn't be and I should be focusing more on me the the person and less of me the wrestler at that moment right but that's just in uh it's in your blood as a talent and as a wrestler and being the nerd behind the scenes uh i just need to take it all in as well so i completely understand i completely understand so let's rewind now back to the bidding like we normally do. Uh, when did you find this crazy business that we love? Who was the first one that said, hey, little Jack, come here. Look at uh, Paul Orndorff on TV or whatever, whoever it was. Who, who showed you wrestling first? Uh, you know, it was probably my dad and my older brother uh, back in the 80s. I mean, I grew up in that era. Um, I was young enough to remember Hulkamania when it was big. Uh, but I wasn't the biggest wrestling fan back then. And as I was getting older there, wrestling kind of wasn't cool in the early nineties anymore and sports and school and all that kind of took over. So I fell out of wrestling for, I want to say six, seven years just because wrestling, Sucked. I mean, that new generation era. Yeah. Kind of, I mean, looking back on it now, watching it, I love watching, you know, 96 pre attitude era wrestling um because of some some of the best wrestling you'd see with Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and all that sort of stuff but when you're young like that you don't care about things like that 
Right. Um, and on, honestly, the, the thing that got me back into pro wrestling uh, was my dad flipping through the TV in 1998 and stopping on Raw when Mike Tyson showed up. And that, that's the thing that, like, it sparked my interest again. And then I was in school the next day, and everybody's talking about wrestling. I, I hadn't watched wrestling in years, and I was like, I got to start catching up, seeing what's going on. And uh, I actually was more of a WCW guy back then. Um, everyone in my school loved the NWO, all that sort of stuff. So I sided a lot more with WCW in the, in the Monday Night Wars than anything else. So did you, since you liked the NWO more, were there more of your favorites in there? Or uh, You were a flipper, too. You, you can't lie to about this, Jack. You flipped as well. But did you... Oh, no, oh God. Uh, I mean, like, I actually, in my parents' house, the, the way that it's laid out, uh, I would sit on, like, the second level of the steps, and I could see the TV in the living room, and I could see the TV in my bedroom. So on one TV, I would have Nitro on. On the other one, I'd have Raw on. So rather than even flipping, I just kind of sat there watching, you know, just moving my head left and right back in the day. Two hours sitting on the steps. Nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, who are some of your favorites? Uh, growing up, uh, uh, now, then, and forever, always my favorite. Um, Shawn Michaels, uh, a close number two. Mick Foley's my probably my third favorite. And then uh, guys like Scott Hall, uh, I grew up loving. And um, I want. I mean, Austin's up there, but like. I mean, I think when you watch me wrestle, you can definitely see the influence of Foley. Uh, there's some Hall in there. There's definitely a lot of Bret Hart influence in there. Uh, those, those are definitely top four, top five when I was growing up. Well, you can say Tommy Dreamer's in there as well. I, I might skip around on where I normally ask a question <laughs> or anything, but you remind me a lot of Tommy Dreamer, and you actually – you know, had some bypasses with Tommy Dreamer and IWC and everything. So you have to take a little extreme from Tommy Dreamer as well, right? Uh, that, not, that, that was a really cool moment for me to get to wrestle a guy like Tom Dreamer because I, I grew up watching ECW just like everybody else. Um, I actually just moved a bunch of stuff from my apartment and had to – take all my old wrestling VHSs and put them to the side. Like I have every ECW on TN, which at that point being the Nashville network, uh, back in the day from Friday night, I have every episode on VHS that I was looking at. I said, man, if I had a VCR at work right now, I could be, just be watching this. I know it's on the network, but there's something cool about watching old, old tapes like that. It's not as good on the network. You don't get the, the local commercials, which actually you're – stream toward ECW a little bit. You don't get all the goodness. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's re rewind again. And what was your main reason for getting in there besides loving the business? Who was the one that said, Jack, you got to stop breaking the coffee tables and the recliners. <laughs> you need to go wrestle somewhere. So go. Um. It, you know, it's tough. I, uh, growing up, I was a little bit heavier. Probably at my heaviest, I was around maybe 275 pounds. And so I never really thought of myself as being able to be a wrestler. I can remember buying wrestling magazines and, you know, reading the ads and all that sort of stuff. So like, hey, kid, you want to be a wrestler? Or, you know, thinking to myself, like, ah, that, that could never happen. Uh, but I always kind of imagined, like, maybe someday I could get involved backstage in some capacity. I just loved it so much. Um, but as time was going on, it's been, you know, start working out and start eating cleaner and all that and growing up more. Uh, I was able to trim down and legitimately reloaded when I said like the first indie wrestling show I ever went to was an IWC show back in 2002 at Hyman Hall. It's like, that was it. Uh, and being there live and watching it, and there was maybe a hundred people at that show. Um, but being there, like Jimmy Vegas was on the show, Sandman, CJ Station, uh, guys like Shirley Doe, um, 
all these guys, and it's like it became more real to me than just going to you know a WWF show at the time or a WCW show before that. That I go, you know, maybe I can do this, and uh, that that was the thing that pretty much got the bug in me right there. IWC, yeah, it, it's. It's amazing. How many other indie shows did you go to growing up, though? I mean, because, you know, if you look at to where you can do some research and see where you've wrestled, you've had to have seen some other ones. Yeah, um, yeah I definitely I ran with a pack, and we kind of just traveled wherever we could at one point. I mean, uh, I used to go up to PWX and the Keysport. Uh, I would go up to Madmore up in Meadville. Uh, IWC shows all the time. Like I actually found when we were in Clearfield back in October, there was a guy selling old IWC DVDs, and I was able to find six uh, Butler shows uh, and a couple of the old CCAC style shows that I was actually at. So it's kind of cool to go back and rewatch those shows to see me sitting front row with the same guys. You know, it, it put like like all, all you guys when you go to shows, it's like. You look out and you see the same fans sitting in the same seats. You know, you're over by the entryway. You know, you got your Bradley Robbins and that crew over on the other side. And it's like there I was every show, heckling or cheering or doing whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I if I could go to any show, I I would jump in a car and go at that point. Yeah, it's uh, wrestling's a family, as everybody says. I don't want to say when you guys have injury issues and you say wrestling is a family it truly is even when you're healthy wrestling's a family oh yeah it's uh i have more friends in wrestling at this point in my life than i do in real life which is crazy because before wrestling i have a real life yeah very true very true so <laughs> let's talk about some of your training uh where to take place and give your trainers some uh some props uh yeah well um I graduated from college, and there came a moment, it was on my birthday, and I just remember kind of thinking to myself, it was like, you're either going to do this or you're not going to do this, so it's like, shit or get off the pot. Um, so I went to the bank the next day, I took out a loan for $5,000, sent him my order to Lance Storm up in Calgary, and about two weeks later, he, he emailed me back saying I was accepted, and I could go to the September class for sure. But then he told me that someone dropped out of the May class and goes, if you want this one, you can do this one. So I instantly emailed on him back, said I'll be there. Uh, had to quit my job, tell uh, my friends, my family, my landlord, my girlfriend at the time. It's like, I live in the Calgary in another three weeks, guys, and I'll see you at the end of the summer. And it's just what I did. It's a uh, I packed up. I left. Uh, Calgary was being hit by a blizzard at the same time that Pittsburgh uh, was going through this weird heat wave at the end of April. It was probably like 95 here, uh, which was insane. So I got snowed in Seattle for about three days. And then three months in the ring every day with Lance, you know, uh, three, four hours a day. It, it became a job up there on this. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And him having the knowledge of the the heart, you know, foundation and the, just that being relinquished on you. Could you feel some of that, you know, the hearts coming through? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely a reason why any of us who went up to Calgary went up there. And it's whether it was you loved Lance. And I, I loved Lance growing up with ECW and WCW yes. especially and all that. Um but then, you know, the the whole lineage from, you know, Lance all the way down to Jericho and Benoit and then Owen and Brett, you know, uh, Dynamite Kid, British Bulldog, all that sort of stuff. It's like that to be up there in that city where wrestling is so uh, revered, you know, it definitely was special for all of us. You brought up the Dynamite Kid, and this is just going to be uh, something that is – Reverting back to a post I posted earlier this morning, Wednesday, um, my family is getting a new dog next year, okay? And I want, I want you to check in on this as well. My family is okay. getting a new dog in 2020, and it's going to be an English bulldog. 
All right, do we name it? Because these are the two names that we're stuck with. Do we name the dog Bruiser or do we name the dog Dynamite? Oh, I will. Uh, Dynamite would be great. Right? Right? So yeah, I mean, I, that doesn't not make sense. Right, so I, I want to make sure, you know, being recorded before. The, the, the poll comes out. I hope I see your name on there next to Dynamite tomorrow so I can <laughs> punch my wife in the face and say it only makes sense that the Bulldog is named a Bulldog name, right? Yeah, exactly. She's coming down now to real, really yell at me. Um, <laughs> so let's do a little word association uh, with about five or six wrestlers. Are you, are you all right with that? Yeah, I can do that. All right. Uh, just to lift a different spin on it, and then we'll get back into it. All right. Andrew Palace. Oh, boy. Um, he's a ball of energy for sure. Uh, we've been teammates in the past, and we've been the bitterest of foes. Uh, so uh, I'm glad I'm not fighting against Andrew Palace right now. Shane Taylor. Uh, legit monster, uh, badass, and out. Peyton, Peyton Graham. Uh, sorry, I didn't. I didn't think I had to say his last name, but Peyton Graham. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Uh, friend, uh, fantastic, uh, good buddy. Wardlow. Oh wow. Uh. Definitely a monster. Um, a good guy deep down, uh, but he definitely, you know, it's for Wardlow. I don't want to talk about him. You, you brought him up, and he wasn't on the list. Uh, Jimmy Nuts. Uh, Jimmy Nuts. Uh, um, fun to wrestle. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I expect to see more of that than in the near future. But all right, uh, when you were in a tag team, you guys got to wrestle the nine-time NWA champions, the Rock and Roll Express. Please tell me how that was. Is the R and R Express is my favorite tag team of all time? Uh, that was a, a pretty cool night for us. Uh, I had actually been lucky enough to get to wrestle Ricky Morton one on one maybe three years before that. Uh and definitely very nervous at that point wrestling just Ricky Morton one on one. Uh the match the tag match with Rock Roll Express was a little bit different because we were also tagging up against two guys from Puerto Rico and one guy spoke very uh broken English and the other one spoke zero English. So it, the match in itself was it was a little bit more difficult for us than what we're normally used to, but uh, getting to take an arm drag from Ricky Morton and all that sort of stuff uh, made up for it entirely. Did did you pick their brains in the back? I mean, I mean, we're, we we have that invisible love, I understand, but come on, in your backstage with the Rock and Roll Express, you have to ask them something. I mean, we just kind of sit there. I mean, it, it's this weird moment where we're sitting there talking to Rock Hall Express, and then there's Billy Gunn sitting right next to them. And, like, they, with, without being able to pick their brains, we just sat there and listened. They told stories and made jokes and all that sort of stuff. It's like we weren't just a couple of indie schmucks hanging out with Rock and Roll Express. They actually were cool with us, so... Pick the brains on wrestling history, no, but just sit there as normal people with them, yeah, that was that's what we got to do with them. And that's even better because Ricky, I got to talk to Ricky this weekend at WrestleCade, and it was literally about sports, and, and nothing wrestling came up. Uh, he remembered mm -hmm. me from the Crockett Cup, and we just shot the shit about NFL and baseball and what's going on, and he he's a brilliant human being. Yeah, he's great. So... How much wrestling, I know you said you haven't turned your damn TV on since the PlayStation 3 broke, da 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 da, -da. but how much wrestling do you keep up with now? Have it be AEW, WWE, Impact, OVW, anything like that? 
I, I try to keep up with everything as much as I can. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I talk about it with some guys where, like, there was a point in life where I couldn't get enough wrestling. Um, and I probably every wrestler will probably say this to you, too. Like, I think we all watched more wrestling before we became wrestlers. I don't know why it just happens that way. But there was a point where, you know, it was two hours on Monday night with Raw. It was three hours with Nitro. Wednesdays was Thunder, uh, Thursdays was SmackDown, Friday was ECW. We had Velocity, we had Livewire, we had Superstars, Heat, WCW. Like, I would be glued to the TV every hour of the day wrestling's on. And now it's like, oh my God, three hours of Raw? I don't know if I can sit through all of this. Um, I keep up with AEW, uh, especially because of Ward Love and Britt. Um, and uh, then I keep up with NXT. I love NWA Power uh, on YouTube there. I'm a few weeks back on that. Uh, but yeah, NWA uh, Power might be, might be my did favorite. I... Oh, uh, go ahead. Did I, did I ruin NWA Power for you then tonight when I asked you about the Rock and Roll Express? No, I saw, the, I saw the thumbnail already on YouTube. I didn't watch it yet though. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I feel, I mean, NWA Power I feel might be the best wrestling show out there right now. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe it's just because I like that older older style of wrestling, uh, that old studio style and all that sort of stuff. It's so cool. Uh, even before all the controversy with Cornette and all that, like, it just was to watch studio wrestling again. I was like, this is kind of cool. Uh, you know, they're doing something right with the NWA right now. Yeah, and, and it's the old gimmicks. Like, are you a fan of question mark? Uh, you know what? That, I, I've seen a couple of videos. I think that's where I fell fell off at right now. Like I got to go back and, and start watching up. I'm maybe three or four episodes back. Okay, okay. So there's only nine on this season. So you have uh, three more show. Or, yeah, three more, four more to go. And uh, I'll tell you, last week's was garbage. Uh, we said it on our show. Okay. So d- you don't have to watch episode eight. Just throw it away. Nothing against Thunder Rosa. I love me some Thunder Rosa, but it's just about her preparing for her cage fight. That, that's it. All right? That, that's it in a nutshell. Um, so how much stuff, because, you know, as a wrestler, everybody says, well, it's my own, it's my own. How much have you borrowed, and you do you continue to borrow, with my air quotes, um, from wrestlers? that you, you change it a little bit, but you make it yours with your own spin. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that if you go and watch any Jack Pollock match, and if I was sitting there and I was like, I stole this from this guy and this from another guy, it's like, that's just kind of how you form who you are. Like, I, I don't do anything cool or anything flashy like that. Uh, I'm a typical wrestler that's somehow converted into a brawler that's now hardcore and does some crazy stuff. Um but I'm more likely to go back and watch, you know, early 90s intercontinental wrestling with Brett and Sean and Perk and all that to try to steal stuff from them than I am to watch what's going on on TV these days and try to steal from those guys. Uh, everything, everything old is new again. So, like, I like to watch the older stuff more just to freshen up Jack Pollock when it comes to the stuff that I do. And that was going to be my comparison before you started lacing everybody's name out. Uh, you heard it earlier. I think you got a little bit of Tommy Dreamer in you. But on the same end, I see a lot of Mr. Perfect in you as well because you're so crisp when you do become technical in the ring that, uh, you know, you're the, ho- the hardcore IWC guy, but you can also be the perfect IWC guy as well. Yeah, I, I, I pride myself in being able to kind of switch gears in that aspect where it's like, if you want to fight, we can fight. But, you know, if you just want to wrestle, like, I can wrestle with you too. So the English professor could not join us tonight because I don't know. He's, I don't know what the hell he's doing. But he did send me a question to uh, ask you, and it's actually a twofold question. Um, he was up late at night one night watching Five Star Wrestling, and you came out of nowhere and beat the hell out of somebody. Um, one, why are you always coming into organizations on surprise? Is that your MO that, you know, you never, you came in IWC that way. 
You came in oh, yeah. Prime Star that way. Now, uh, what what the hell's going on that you can't be, uh, you know, recognize that you're there? Uh, you know, I I don't know when that actually started for me, uh, but I guess I I just like making an impact when I show up, you know. And if it's the moment's right, uh, Jack Paul will show up anywhere. And uh, again, from the English professor, what did you think of Five Star when it was up and running? Um, you know, Five, Five Star was a company um, that were, they were going to be running in Butler a lot, so that was kind of why I wanted to work there. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure that it, if you follow the wrestling, you know that five stars open and closed and closed right, and open right. a million times, that sort of stuff. So uh, at this point in time, uh, to me, five stars is dead. Um, I know it's probably coming back again, but uh, it was a place for younger guys to get some experience, um, and it was what it was for the time. Let's talk about some of your younger your younger days. That you got to wrestle in, you know, the NWA is now back to being the NWA. You, you believe so? Yeah. But uh, a few years back, the NWA was nowhere near where the NWA was, and no disrespect, you got to be part of that, though. You know, NWA, what, East or whatever the hell they were calling the one that you were in. Could you feel yeah. something in that, though, being part of the NWA? Uh, you know what? Um, when I first came back to Pittsburgh and was trying to get involved in wrestling, they were NWA East, uh, PBX. And they definitely used the NWA a lot more with the uh, North American title and all that sort of stuff. We, they had some of the NWA names coming in for that. Uh, by the time I was actually on the roster, though, and working, it was kind of that break, that split with the NWA that a lot of the indie companies did. Uh, and so it was a lot more PWX at the time, less NWA. So I never got the full indie NWA experience in the early 2010s and all that that some of the other companies got to. If there was one, and I'm going to take this, this is the first time I've ever asked this, by the way. If there was one organization you could go to right now taking the money out, because I don't give a shit that anybody can give you $15 billion. If you could go to one organization, have it be NWA, WWE, AEW, of those three, where, where would you want to go as a dream? Uh, you know, I mean, probably the NWA right now. Uh, every, everyone grows up and they want to be in the WWF, WWE. Um, and AEW is cool and it's hip and it's all that right now. But there's something, there's this really cool vibe right now with the NWA that I did a lot. Um, and I actually, I actually thought that a while back too, just watching NWA and kind of seeing people post on social media about, hey, this guy should be, uh, get a look at NWA Power and all that. And I go, you know, if there was any company right now that if I got a chance and had a break, I go, I feel like I'd like to go to the NWA. Yeah, I, I feel it fits great. I mean, I know you guys, let's say you're there now, and you have to do a three-day event because you're doing a pay-per-view on said day, and then Monday and Tuesday you're shooting, you know, eight weeks for the film. Then you have eight weeks to go market yourself and go still do stuff, but you're still under that NWA title. Uh, I, I, not, you know, I'm not saying title is in belt, but NWA title is in, like, Jack Pollock's from the NWA. So you're going to make big money doing stuff on the indies all over again, right? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, especially with the, I mean, if you're in WWE, you're just in WWE. If you're in AEW at this point, you're just in AEW. And, like, the with the NWA, right, like, all these guys can keep on, they all get out there, they all work more, they all travel. Uh, you know, it'd be nice. Like, I, I've always said that everyone wants the main event WrestleMania, but at some point in wrestling, you just go, you know, it'd be cool if I didn't have to work a nine to five job anymore and I could just 
do this for a living, you know. And next thing you know, it's like you're wrestling in Charlotte one night, and then next night you're in Atlanta, the next week you're somewhere else, and it's like that. that I mean, even with the NWA, that would be kind of cool in that where you do the TV tapings, you put yourself out there, you start working out other places. Um, yeah. Barry Horowitz said it best uh, when we interviewed him, is everybody, no disrespect, everybody's not going to make it. So he was content being that guy that everybody beat the hell out of because guess what? He was always going to be there. Uh, Flash in the pans are there two, three years, but Barry Horowitz took an ass beating and went all over the world. Oh, I, I mean, there's something to be said about the uh being a, a, a good hand uh, job guy, you know, uh, someone like the Brooklyn Brawler, too, you know, made right. a career out of making guys look great. Uh, never made an event at WrestleMania, but got, he wrestled everybody that you know who made an event at WrestleMania. Yeah. I, I wish I was smart enough just to be that enhancement talent. Uh, do you guys mind that? I'm not saying your enhancement talent. Jesus, I, I pissed off Calvin already, but I'm not <laughs> saying your enhancement. But uh, is that a word that's all right, enhancement talent? Because I personally don't like um, jobber. I, I think that's a wrong word. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, in, enhancement talent sounds better. Uh, it's To me, it's the same thing. It's... I'm getting paid to do do one thing is to make the guy I'm in the ring with look as good as possible. So whether I'm doing the job or enhancing the talent, uh, you know, it all pays the same. Right, right. Uh, all right, time for the weird questions before we get to the end. Um, what's your favorite breakfast food? Oh, uh, geez. Um, I, I love just cottage cheese. And pineapple, and then a cup of coffee. I was gonna say there had to be a cup of coffee in there. What, what's your favorite coffee? Uh, well, I uh, in Pittsburgh, I, I love Nicholas Coffee down in Market Square. There, been around for a hundred years now. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll go anywhere for a good cup of coffee. Uh, mostly, oh, like a nice Sumatra. I would say is my favorite uh, roast. That's good. That's good. I, I, I knew you, there was something about that you you really loved coffee. Because I was going to say, if you're just saying pineapple and cottage cheese, you look like a, like a real coffee connoisseur. Uh, I, I'm, I, my blood's full of caffeine from coffee all, all day, every day. Right. Uh, you can only have three people in your contacts, barring your family. Your family's allowed in there. Three people from the IWC roster are allowed in your contacts. Who are they? Uh, well, I used to have two guys that would have been in that group. Uh, they can go to hell. Um, geez. I guess Bob Sampson, uh, Chris LaRusso, and probably, let's say, Jimmy Nuss on that one. I can give you LaRusso. You know we love nuts. Why <laughs> in the hell, Jock Sampson? Uh, there's something about that guy. His, his wit, his charm, his belly. I'm not sure. Uh, we love talking baseball. So I guess that's what... We don't have to talk about wrestling when it's Jock and Jack. Uh, he's a Reds fan. I'm a Pirates fan. Both teams are pretty terrible, so we can talk about how terrible we are. I'm a Tigers uh, fan. Let me join that conversation. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you guys did it right this year. You guys tanked real hard, you know. <laughs> yeah. Next year, too. Next year, too. Don't worry about that. It's, it's, it's a rebuild for all of us right now. Well, yeah, the Pirates are going to be another 20-year rebuild, probably. Yeah, yeah, hopefully not. I, I don't know if I can live long enough for another 20 years. I, I can't. Uh, last, last silly one. Uh, not really silly, because this is actually this is one of our, our big ones. Um. Who's on your Mount Rushmore, Jack? Um, wow, that's a tough one. Personal Mount Rushmore, who I think would the Mount Rushmore of wrestling. No, personal. I, I don't give a shit what you personal? think other people think. What is your personal Mount Rushmore? Uh, personal Mount Rushmore, I would go Brett, Sean, Hogan, and then I would probably throw... 
Uh, Foley up there? The fourth one's like always the, the worst one. Yeah, I, I mean, like, it's, it comes down to my favorites again. You know, except, I mean, Hogan, I got to Hogan's the guy that made me love wrestling as a kid. You know, he's my favorite wrestler. He's on my top five. Maybe not even top ten, but he's definitely much more material. Right. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, so what advice do you give the, the kids at uh, Court Time Sports to say, hey, Jack, I want to be just like you when I when I grow up. How could I do that? What do you give them? Uh, be, be smart, be realistic about things. Uh, and if you're going to do this, you got to dedicate yourself to it. Um, you know, it's, it's all, any one of us who trained uh, with Lance or trained with the IWC or anything, like, you give up so much of who you are in your real life. Uh, know right now that this becomes a lot more than just a, a weekend hobby, you know. Uh, so be realistic about how much time in your life you're willing to give up. Yeah, because you gave up a year of your life, more or less, correct? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I blew up my knee in March 2018, tried, uh, tried going as hard as I could, started scaling back, and then the last year sat at home doing nothing, really. Yeah. All right, uh, your dream match. Can you get it right? Is it uh, it's who you want to wrestle, what stipulation, and where? Nobody gets all three. I don't understand why this is such a hard concept. My dream match. Oh, jeez. Um, see, I think that would ch- it changes so much with what I'm watching. Uh, like right now, I've been watching a lot of old Foley matches. So I would say Mick Foley in a in a street fight. Uh, and my favorite Foley match ever is at Rumble against Triple H. So probably in some aspect like that. But if you catch me on another day, like I want to wrestle Bret Hart in a a 60 minute time limit match in Calgary at the, like the old Stampede wrestling. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, have you ever, one more big question before we get to uh, the Saturday once again. Um, have you ever thought about uh, going outside the box and, you know, doing some wrestling at, say, WrestleCade next year to uh, get some eyes noticed on the Pittsburgh? product once again or you know we need to talk the plumber about getting some of you guys down to wrestlecade because this opened the doors up to so many different people when i was down there this weekend i, I want to push you guys to to go as well um would it be something you guys would be interested in doing or is plumber got you oh, in yeah. such a tight leash no i mean it's uh i got my iwc show every month um and then after that it's i'm um, jack pollock the entertainer wrestler uh for myself so i mean i'm i'm definitely willing to travel anywhere i can and i've just kind of been waiting now now that my knees as healthy as it can be for nine months out um once the new year comes i'm looking to get out there a whole lot more and travel as much as i can well uh russell cage always booked the uh... Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right after Thanksgiving, so I can give you everybody's uh, numbers that you need to get a hold of, because I think that would be, one, amazing for you guys, because you know I'm here, because I love helping you guys out, but it's also, it's going to open the eyes up on Pittsburgh once again, which I also want to do, because, you know, we stumbled across IWC, and holy shit, we found probably a gold mine. You know, I'm not getting anything out of it, but... For the people that have come through it, it, it's amazing, correct? Oh, yeah. I I mean, like, growing up, like like I said, I mean, IWC is the company that I first saw, the company I wanted to wrestle for in Pittsburgh. And so it took me five years of wrestling, you know, uh, for PWX and BOW and other little companies here and there before I got the chance to even come here. So, yeah, I, I mean, IWC is it right there. Yeah, without a doubt. And this Saturday, you have a huge title match. I told you we'd wrap back around it. Um, you're only two matches back. 
So this is only your third match. See how that knee is going to hold up and everything. But it is for the IWC Heavyweight Championship against one of your best friends, Jackson Argos. And uh, Jack, the mic's yours. You go. Tell, tell us what we want to hear, brother. Uh, you know, for, for a guy who thinks that he made a plan to get two rookies into this company uh, back in, in 2016, and I, I'm reading the social media post that Jackson keeps tagging me in, which is cute. Uh, this guy that thinks he's a master plan kind of guy with everything he's done, the takeover that we did and all that, that's, that's cool. Uh, but our guys never planned for Jack Paul to show back up when I did. And I could see a Kate Fury, the fear in his eye. And if he wasn't wearing black jeans, I'm sure he pissed himself. So this this is now 12 months in the making. This is everything that I've thought about since surgery. You know, when I couldn't bend my knee, uh, when I couldn't lift weights, when I sat there, uh, Definitely, I've thought about getting my hands on Argus. And Saturday night, it's going to be a fight, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt Jack and Argus. I'm definitely gonna beat the hell out of him. Are you worried about the other one, RC Dupree, just lingering around, or do you have something? Well, you, of course, you're not going to say yes. I have something up my sleeve. Shut up, Mark. You're an idiot. Uh, are you worried about RC a little bit? Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything past those two. Uh, and again, I'm also the guy that talks about everything they know. So for, for every trick that they want to try with me, uh, I've taught them, but I know a lot more tricks because I've been around a lot longer. Guys, again, that's December 7th, this coming Saturday at Court Time Sports in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Uh, go to iwcwrestling.com. Tickets are still available, or you can come to the door, and uh, you'll see the Tresslers. You'll see the plumbers there handing out the tickets, and you'll have one uh, a great time, uh, family-friendly wrestling uh, that you'll get hooked on and you'll be back over and over and over again just like Jack did as a kid and I'm doing with my son and our, our buddies are with our sons as well. So, Jack, uh, thanks for spending some time with us. But tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, just uh, at Jack Pollock. Uh You'll see a picture of me probably. And then also on Twitter at J. Paul's Beard because I have a beard. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not on Instagram yet. Uh, maybe someday. There's too much social media out there. I, I just want to be a wrestler sometimes. Social media is a job within itself. Trust me. I know it, it, this. It, it, it's a chore. It really is. And you brought up your beard and it is from one man to another man. I wish mine could grow as sexy as yours does. Mine just gets funky. So I have to keep it short. What's the what's what do I need to do to do that? Uh, you know what? Uh, honestly, at uh, one point in my life, I kind of kept my beard short and neat and trim, and then uh, I I feel like legitimately I just woke up one morning and looked in the mirror and it was this big, and I go, huh? I guess that's just what I look like now. I, I, you just get real lazy and let it grow in. All right. Well, maybe I need to do that. I need to get real lazy and let it grow in because uh, but stop some... caring about how you look. But there's some time that it just gets funky, though. It's just like you don't know what it's doing, if it's just going to fold back in or go straight, you know? Yeah, I mean, you got to put products in there, too. you got to use oils and balms. you got to shape it yourself. Uh, that, that, see, that's where the laziness sets in. I don't want that. <laughs> All right, Jack, uh, I'll let you go. I know you want to go to the gym. Do, do your business tonight, and uh, we'll see you Saturday night. We're looking forward to it. So the hardcore icon of IWC is just ready. He's ready to go. He's ready to take on Argos this Saturday. And uh, thanks, Jack, for the, the beard tips. Uh, that is from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I, I need to do something with this. And uh, yours is a very nice-looking beard. But...
Guys, what a great interview to just talk about him and Dreamer. And after I dug a little bit, you find out that he had a match and he was backstage with the Rock and Roll Express and the Word Association. Uh, I'm shocked too uh, on some of the things he said, but nonetheless, uh, it's great to have Jack on, especially right before a huge event this coming Saturday in Elizabeth, December 7th, um, the second annual Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic, uh, all because IWC continuing to put this on. Main event is Jack Snargos against our guest, Jack Pollock. You have Jimmy Nuts taking on Dylan Bostic. You have Ray Lynn taking on Katie Arquette. You have the Battle Royal. You have the North defending the titles against the Regulators. It is a all-out, one hell of a show. Uh, of course, that's what IWC does. They continue to blow the roof off of Core Time Sports. Guys, if you can't see it, you can go to IWCWrestling.com if you're not going to be there, is what I meant to say. You can go to IWCWrestling.com and sign up for their monthly package of $9.99, or you can buy the standalone pay-per-view just from that night. Either way, you should do it because you're going to witness one hell of a card and the plumbers are always there to add a little wrinkle somewhere. Somewhere they add something. Guys, I always say these are my favorite part of the podcast, sitting down and talking with, you know, the wrestlers, the talent, uh, the, anything, the, the owners, the whatever. I love this part, just having one-on-one. So if you want anyone on Can Crushers, just say, Hey, Mark, will you reach out to da 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 and, you know, get them on the show? Or if you're listening to this and you want to be on Can Crushers, for the love of God, just email me. Send me a Facebook message. Our email is cancrushers69 at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter. Find us on Instagram. I don't care if you send me a Snapchat, whatever. Just get to me. We'll, we'll bring you on Can Crushers. Get down, say your piece. Just talk to us. We love doing this, and we want to help promote you as well. I don't care wherever you are. We will help you out. Let's get you guys to that next level. We love indie wrestling, and that's what it's all about, is helping each other out with this. So, nonetheless, get your ass to Elizabeth. And, again, I want to thank Jack for coming on the show. Thanks to the plumbers for opening up the doors to all the talent uh, in the back. And remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Argos, you better watch out. <laughs>